Hi, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here with another Positively Penny Black video where we're doing our part to try and bring you some moments of peace, distraction, and crafty fun during these uncertain times we currently find ourselves in. And in today's video, I'm going to be stamping and painting a card using our cling stamp blooming bunch and this is such a really fun stamp to work with I've done several cards with it and several different color combinations and today's card might be one of my favorites so here's a look at the card that we'll be creating this is a large sized card it's a 5 by 7 card but you certainly could use this stamp on a standard a2 size card as well and my inspiration for this card came from this gorgeous card by Mila I really love loved her um, variety of colors she added to her bouquet and so that is where I drew my inspiration and I used hers her color placement and color choices in creating mine and I will put a link to her blog in this card down in the YouTube description box below so I am going to be doing my painting with distress ink reinkers used as watercolors and I went ahead and stamped my image onto Canson 140 pound watercolor paper using Memento Toffee Crunch ink. And I love to use this ink for this particular technique. It's kind of a cheater way of getting a no line watercolor look. I find that with this ink on this paper and um, it seems to take on the color of whatever ink that you paint on top of it. So it kind of gives you that look of a no line watercolor. You don't have a stark black outline, but you also don't have to worry too much about things bleeding or blending into each other, and you can still see the lines very easily while you're painting. So to paint with these reinkers used as watercolors, I first start by putting down my darker color in the area I want it to be darkest. And that's where mostly on my paintbrush is just the ink. Then I rinse off my paintbrush, pat it onto a paper towel, and then go back and blend that with just a little bit of water onto on my paintbrush. And I can always go back and drop in more color or more water if I need to lighten or darken things up and I'm just kind of working around. I'm trying trying to remember to leave some areas of white. That's kind of been a goal of mine in coloring. Um, I find that gives a lot of life to the images. And also trying to work around um, the flower, giving time for some of the areas that I've already painted to dry so that when I put color next to that, they don't start bleeding into each other and I lose my areas of light and dark. Now for this uh, color here I'm using is Picked Raspberry Distress Ink Reinker. And I will have all of the colors, the stamp names, everything, the paper, the paintbrushes listed at the very end of the video on screen. So if you want to look at that in more detail, you can just hit pause to check that out. I will also link to the stamps down in the YouTube description box below to the Penny Black store if you want to check those out in more detail as well. And I'm just going to continue to paint around this image. Here I am using the um, spiced marmalade color. And now I'll go in with barn door with the reds. I'm also not too worried about getting an exact blend or a lot of variation in light to dark on this because I will be going in with my gouache paints to add some additional shading. And again, I just looked right at Mila's card for inspiration, where which, which flowers she did in pink, which she did in red, which she did in yellow. And then I just copied that, um, and which was really nice for me. Sometimes I am just feel like I'm out of ideas, but I want to do something creative. So I love to take a look at a card by another talented crafter and see what is it about this card that I love so much and try and capture that in something that I am creating. So thank you so much, Mila, for the inspiration. You can see here how I am just working with that red, dropping in some darker colors and blending them out with water. And when I say darker colors, I just mean my paintbrush is loaded with mostly ink, not water. 
Now I will begin painting on these leaves. Now there's a lot of leaves down here, so please do not feel overwhelmed. I picked the largest ones, the ones that were easiest for me to see, and tried to add the dark in sort of the areas where things would be folded over and the light in the lighter areas, but for some of them I just went ahead and just painted them. <laughs> I think the key when you have a lot of detail like this, if you don't, if you're not in the mood to really focus in and spend a lot of time figuring out exactly where your shading should go, is just to have variation. Have some leaves that are light, have some that are dark, have some dark areas next to light areas, and that will just give movement to everything and not let it look too flat. So now I'm going to move down here to the pot and I am just putting some Weathered Wood Distress Ink Reinker used as a watercolor. I want it to be the darkest along the sides here giving it the look of a curve. So I put that paint down and then with whatever water is left in the brush I'm just painting that on. You can see here I can drop in that uh, more concentrated ink on the sides. Do that again here on the other side. I do find sometimes it's helpful to turn my paper just for I have a better angle for my hand. And now I have wet down my brush, patted it dry on a paper towel, and gone back and blend that. I'm adding just a touch of Gathered Twigs Distress Ink Reinker here for the dirt in the pot. And then just a little bit darker color or a more saturated color here along the handle. And fiddling around a little bit, make sure I get the bottom of this as well. Now for the very small stem areas, I like to use a Pit Artist pen to color this in. Any fine tip marker would work. And for me, that's just easier than trying to hold steady with a paintbrush. <laughs> so once that's all dry, just go in and color those in. And I want to ground this image just a little bit here, so I'm putting down some gathered twigs and then in with a wet brush along the outer edges and just lightly blending that out. Now I'm going to grab my Arteza gouache paints and I've just put these into a palette um, that I just picked up at Walmart and you can re-wet these and use them um, you know days later and I just like to use these. They are for me gouache paints are kind of like uh, an acrylic that you, you can turn into a watercolor. So the more water you add, the more transparent they're going to be. The less water you add, the more they're going to be like an acrylic and the more opaque they're going to be. And I find just adding touches of these here and there just softens the image. I think because they are opaque, they cover some of the lines or the outlines where you put them on or they sort of uh, soften those as well. The variation in color um, also adds a little more interest. Now when you do put these onto something you have watercolored, if you do use quite a bit of water, they are going to re-wet and sort of blend with what is underneath, which I find to be a really nice quality. I'm certainly not going to put these onto every single leaf or every single part, just here and there, again so that I have areas of light and areas of dark. Now if you've colored something and it looks really flat or lifeless, you can also use the white gouache paint to go in and add your highlights back in. I am often forget to leave some white in my painting, so I find that is another handy way to use these paints. And you can put light colors on light, um, or light colors on dark, or dark colors on light. Um, whatever you need to do because they have that opaque nature to them. Now you also could just stop at the watercoloring. I think it looks um, very dynamic that way too. But for me painting is really fun and really relaxing so I enjoy fiddling and going back in and layering the two mediums together. 
Now here you can see I'm going with a lighter yellow, just going in and softening up the petals. I feel like on the petals when I do this, it really gives them that velvety uh, sort of texture you get from a real flower petal. And again, it's another way to really lighten up your images too if you've gone a little too dark or if you like the look of pastel but don't want things to look too washed out. You can paint sort of more vibrant colors underneath and then go in and add touches of the lighter gouache paints on top. You can see there where I put that light yellow up on the tip of that petal and the inside being a darker color that it really made that look a lot more dynamic and dimensional. Now on my reds I felt like I needed more dark so I am actually using a darker gouache paint on the reds. So you can see on the yellow flowers I used a lighter gouache paint and here I am using a darker red gouache paint to darken up these flowers, to darken up the areas of a shadow like the inside there of the flowers. And if you look at that flower I've just painted versus one where I haven't added the gouache paint to it, you can really see that difference and how much more dynamic it makes it. And I'll just work my way around doing the same thing. Again, all of the exact colors of the Arteza, Arteza gouache paints are listed at, up on screen at the very end of the video for you. And then finally I'm just going to go in with more of a peachy toned pink color onto these flowers and so they aren't quite as purple but give it more of a pink look to them. And again I also think that gives them that softer look that will tie in with the rest of the flowers that I have already added the gouache paints to. Now I'm going to add some inking. So I'm using Memento Peanut Brittle ink and I'm applying this using a jumbo sponge dauber tool. You could also use just a standard ink blending tool with a foam pad. Starting off of the edge and working the way on, working my way on in a circular motion. This is something um, that Mila had on her card that I just thought made it look so soft and pretty. And now my sentiment comes from our transparent stamp set, Blooming Sentiments. These are some really great spring and encouragement themed sentiments and I'm going to stamp mine just right on the top here of this card and I am keeping this card just very clean and simple it's ready this panel is ready to be mounted to a 5 by 7 note card so here is a look at the finished card at those that painting once it is dry and the variation with the uh, Distress Ink re-inkers use this watercolors and the gouache paints. Again, the finished card there in, in the whole card. Uh, I thank Mila so much for the inspiration and I thank you all for watching too. If you enjoyed today's video, um, we really are committed to bringing our customers positive messages of inspiration, hope, art, craft, and sharing. So we invite you to um, sort of fill your feeds on your phone and computer with our Facebook, Instagram, and blog posts, which are loaded with beauty, flowers, critters, and we're trying to put all things happy in there for you. And I'll link to all of these for you down in the YouTube description box below. And again, don't forget to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button and the bell to be notified of our future videos and if you stay tuned here you will see up on screen the list of all the supplies used in creating this card. Happy stamping!